as Holly said today, we're going to talk about conceptual estimating, and uh, we're going to look at how you can reduce the paper trail uh, that's needed to track an estimate during the pre-construction process. So the BIM 5.2 webinar is going to focus on the discussion about how the model can be used for more than just 3D coordination and how you can reduce this paper trail. The agenda today includes concepts of model-based estimating, how you can generate schematic and construction caliber quantities from a model versus just using regular BIM quantities. We'll look at how schematic models can be used for estimating inside the Eco Office, the Eco Office Cost Planner and Cost Explorer specifically. And finally, we will discuss the benefits of using model-based estimating during the uh, pre-construction process. So let's start with uh, just a recap of um, the concept behind 5D BIM and the concept behind using quantities for model-based estimating and model-based scheduling. As we discussed in our earlier courses, the quantity is the key driver of cost and of an accurate schedule. You can see on the top that using the quantity with a unit cost and a, and a markup, you can get to an accurate estimate. And you can see on the bottom how you can get to an accurate schedule by using quantity with production rates distributed across locations. So today we're going to take a look at how these quantities can be used from the onset of the project from the very beginning using just very schematic quantities. When you first receive the drawings for a project that you need to bid on, typically you would either receive detailed drawings if it's a, a hard bid project and the design is already complete, or you might receive just a napkin sketch and you'd need to quickly create a building model that represents the design. So you don't typically have time to create a very detailed model at that point. You can just create something very simple like what you see on the screen here, represent spaces such as retail space, residential space, circulation, or maybe parking. So here on this image you can see that we've represented parking with uh, gray blocks. And then we have some office space up until the 10th uh, floor, and then we have some residential space on top represented with a different color. So these objects are very simple objects that you can create really fast. And uh, typically, these objects give you enough detail to get started with an estimate, to get started with a, uh, with a budget on a hard bid job. Once you start add, adding more information to the model, that's when you can derive construction caliber quantities that are more accurate than just regular BIM quantities. So BIM applications have to be programmed to be able to calculate these accurate quantities. And Vico spent the last five years in understanding the best way to, to calculate them. So in, in this example, you can see that for a column, you, you're going to be able to extract the gross volume, the net volume. We're going to calculate the surface areas correctly. So as more detail becomes available about the project and those massing elements, the zones, get replaced with accurate construction components, you can replace your assumptions with real quantities from the model and then track the changes in the design and track the changes in cost against your initial assumption. So let's take a look at how this works just uh, as a quick summary and a recap of uh, our previous discussion about model-based estimating. When you create a building component, you break that down into assemblies, and those assemblies can then be broken down to components and resources. So if you self-perform, for example, concrete, you can go down to the lowest level of detail and include material, labor, and equipment costs. But if you're just working on a schematic estimate uh, for a hard bid job, you can start with just costing assemblies. Using the assemblies, you can assign a cost. You can make sure that those assemblies are correctly located in the project so you can break the uh, assembly cost or the uh, square footage cost out based on locations, based on zones. And as you assign the unit costs or export the quantity information into another 
uh, estimating so software, you can create your own estimate. You can see if you stay in the VCO environment, you're going to have an interactive dashboard that can show the 3D model, the changes in the cost, and the estimate at the same time. So you have a very good overview about what's happening in the project, how the cost changes, and uh, what areas you need to focus on in order to finalize your estimate. I think most of you are already familiar with this graph that shows how project progresses through time. And on the vertical axis, it shows how specification levels and a variance decreases and increases. You can see the blue graph shows the cost range. So as you start your estimate, your cost range, your variance is high. And the specification level of the design is low. As the estimate evolves, the specification level becomes more complex, higher, and the cost range goes down, the variance decreases. So by the end of the job, when you formulate your GMP, you're going to have a very small cost range of zero, and you're going to have a level of specificity that's, that's high. The goal of VICO Office, VICO Cost Explorer, and VICO Cost Planner is to help you facilitate this process and help you implement this model progression through a um, process that we call the model progression specification. As Holly mentioned earlier, this is the tool, this is the formula or the, the spreadsheet that you could use, uh, that, which is documented in the AIA E202 document for defining the stages as you progress from a very schematic model to a more specific model during the course of construction. VICO initiated the development of the MPS document with WebCore, and WebCore refined the process with the AIA California Council. The document was released in 2008 December, and it describes the uh, level of development or level of detail and includes uh, a sample for model progression spec. You can see the, the model progression specification is broken down by uh, uniformat codes, uniformat classification system. And for every system, you can enter a level of detail and a, uh, an owner of, of that specific scope. So this is important because estimators this way can define what kind of content they need in the model at different stages of the design in order to get the right detail into their estimate. So for example, the, the uh, percentage of the contingency could change and could decrease as the level of specificity includes uh, increases in the project. And an estimator can immediately define what is going to be the level of variance based on the scope that's still at a lower level of detail at a certain stage of the project. So it really helps out not only for the contractor and the subcontractors to define what, in, what is included in the model for coordination, but it also helps for the estimator to define what is it that they can use for their estimate and how much of that will impact the size of the contingency, the percentage of the contingency, based on the variance and based on the risk in the project that's still outstanding. So the first step is to use zones, as I explained earlier. These zones will represent spaces that you can then assign to line items inside VECO Cost Planner, assign a unit cost, and uh, roll up that unit cost and uh, define a price for the project. So these unit costs are typically dollar per square foot unit costs that you can apply based on the type of the building, the uh, use, use case of the, uh, of the area, so whether it's retail, office, or parking. Or in medical buildings, you can even break it down further and include cost for an OR, cost for uh, a nurse's station, and cost for circulation. 